watch TV, and we're going, well, I guess Oswald did it. And to this very day, as you well know, the mass media, the corporate mass media, that is now owned by only one of five corporations, and these five corporations have interlocking directorships and ownerships. So in other words, a handful of people determine everything you see and hear. And I'm not just talking about news. I'm talking about books, book clubs, satellite, cable. Netflix. Netflix, everything. It's, it's all owned by one of these five corporations. Uh, billboards, magazines. That's another thing. Uh, when I was a, back in the days of the old republic, there were about just a handful of major magazines that people wrote or read in this country. There was Life and Time, Saturday Evening Post, and then there was U.S. News and World Report, Time, Newsweek. Look. Okay. Dallas Look. Yeah. No, that's a newspaper. That's a start saying newspaper, but I was being too kind to. Uh, <laughs> Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest, okay. And now today, if you go check, you'll find there's about 28,000 magazines out there today, okay. Uh, there's mountain climbing magazine, mountain bike, you know, snow skiing magazine, you know, everything for everybody, but they've got us all separated. Now, we all read one same year and something over there, and we don't get the big picture. That's how you keep it all down. And, of course, John's already explained to you uh, what they do in the broadcast media, which is even under tighter control than the print media. I had trouble at the Star-Telegram getting stories in, but if I could, that was at the time when the Carter family owned it, and it, but at that same time, if I could prove up what I was saying, or if I had three or four sources, uh, they grudgingly would run the story. But obviously that's not happening today because if I was a news editor for the Dallas Morning News, I'd have somebody here covering this meeting, you know? In fact, that reminds me of an experience I had several years back uh, when um, you had two fellows on the stage at one of the old JFK conferences, uh, Gerald Custer, uh, who was the uh, man who took the x-rays, uh, and then, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and then also uh, the- Paul O'Connor? Paul O'Connor, thank you, who, uh, who took the body out of the casket, and uh, Aubrey Reich, the ambulance driver who wrapped Kimmy's body up, put it in the coffin, Big Brown's coffin, and shipped it out to, uh, to Air Force One to travel back to Washington. And uh, then so Connor, who was the first to receive the body there at uh, Bethesda, and it was in a slate gray shipping casket, okay, in a zippered body bag, all right. Totally, two totally different accounts, which shows you that there's something not right going on. I was standing in the back listening to this, along with Mike Cochran, who at that time was the head of the Associated Press in, uh, in uh, Texas, headquartered in Fort Worth, and came to Dallas for all these things. And I said, Mike, you hearing this? He said, yeah. I said, you gonna write about it? He said, eh, probably not, and he didn't and they didn't, and there was no talking about this. This, this, this just didn't write. I, I, get as, I get as fired up as John, but I don't know, maybe he's older and more, and more tough than I am. I just, I just don't want to have to go through the screaming and hollering every time I talk about it. But it's, uh, you can't believe your media, you can't believe, and you certainly can't believe your polls, can you? <laughs>